Okay, here we're going to have a look at some identities that require uh, us to substitute other identities into them uh, to make them provable. Um, those mainly being Pythagorean identities. So, if we start with something like sine x minus cosine squared x sine x equals sine cubed x. And we have cosines on our left hand side and we want to get everything in terms of sine. We know that we can easily um, take our cosine squared x and find its sine equivalent by looking at our Pythagorean identities which happens to be 1 minus sine squared x. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in there. Sine x minus bracket 1 minus sine squared x bracket multiplied by sine x equals sine cubed x. And next I'm just going to multiply through uh, this negative 1 just to simplify things a bit. So I'm going to end up with sine x plus negative 1 plus sine squared x inside the bracket multiplied by sine x equals sine cubed x. Then I'm just going to have sine x and I'm going to multiply the sine x through each term in the bracket. So I'm going to get a negative sine x. So sine x minus sine x plus sine squared x times sine x is sine cubed x plus sine cubed x equals sine cubed x. And conveniently enough, these two sines cancel out. And we're just left with sine cubed x equals sine cubed x. And that's proven. Um, next, let's have a look at one that's a little bit different, but just the same idea. We're going to see we have tangent x sine squared x plus tangent x cosine squared x equals we just want one tangent x. So normally what we would do right now um, is we would turn these tangents into sine and cosine uh, sine over cosine and see if we could get anything to cancel but I think here it's going to be easier just to leave them as tangent and have them kind of tagged along with our sine and our cosine. Because um, we know we have a positive tangent x cosine squared x here. And we know we have a tangent x multiplied by sine squared x. Now we can turn sine squared x into uh, something with a Pythagorean identity. We can turn it into 1 minus cosine x which is going to, very conveniently, if we do that, we say we have tangent x multiplied by 1 minus cosine squared x plus tangent x cosine squared x equals tangent x. And we multiply this through. We're going to get our 1 tangent x and we're going to get a negative tangent x cosine squared x term and then we still have our positive tangent x cosine squared x term here which equals tangent x so then these two cancel each other out and all we're left with is tangent x equals 
tangent x. Now, most people will instinctively first turn this tangent into sine x over cosine x. And it's, it's not wrong. It just takes a few more steps, and it takes a little bit more work. Um, so before you do that, just make sure that it can't be simplified a lot easier, like we've done here. Um, so let's have a look at, at one more. Let's take tangent cubed x multiplied by secant squared x and subtract tangent cubed x and we're proving that this is equal to tangent to the fifth power x which is kind of a funny looking one but okay so right off the bat we've got uh, a tangent, uh, yeah, I'm just going to convert this into sine and cosine, just to make it look a little more familiar. So we've got uh, sine cubed x over cosine cubed x. And secant x, I can actually, I can also make in terms of tangent. I can uh, convert this into uh, 1 plus tangent squared x. So I'm going to do that. I'll go 1 plus tangent squared x minus, I forgot my n here, minus tangent cubed x, or we'll just write it as sine cubed x over cosine cubed x, because that's what we're doing here to make it look simpler. So when I multiply this through, I'm going to get I'm, I'm going to get spit right back out. I'm going to get a sine cubed x over cosine cubed x, um, which is going to be positive. Um, then I'm going to get this multiplied uh, plus sine cubed x over cosine cubed x multiplied by tangent squared x, which is um, going to be just sine squared x over cosine squared x minus sine cubed x over cosine cubed x. So this here cancels out this right away. These two multiply together, so when we're multiplying exponents, we just add them. We get the 3 and the 2, which is the 5 we're looking for. So then we get sine to the 5th power x over cosine to the 5th power x, which equals tangent to the 5th power x. And this is kind of the longer way of looking at it. Like, we could have left this as tangent and just multiplied it through, so we'd get one tangent here, which is what we have, and we'd get a tangent cubed here multiplied by tangent squared. But it can be kind of helpful to look at it like this, because a lot of people will do this on tests or exams, just from instinctively turning tangent into sine and cosine. So I think it's kind of helpful um, to look at this one in terms of sine and cosine. Um, perhaps a little more complex looking, but still neat nonetheless. <laughs>